Today I'm back in Manhattan Beach exploring more of the area that I'm staying in here. And you know, it's just so cool being in this spot, like just in California in general guys where there's more mountains and hills and stuff, like over this way, just being in the neighborhood here, you guys can see down there, way down the distance you have the ocean and you have the uh, Hermosa Beach Pier. That's actually the ocean way out there too, even though it's kind of hard to tell. It's just so neat to be walking around a regular neighborhood like this and be able to actually see the beach and stuff from your house, right? Like in Miami, that doesn't exist. That's not a thing unless you live right on the water, right? And if you live right on the water, you're either living on the intracoastal waterway with a house or you're in a condo that has an ocean view. Like there's really no in between. But here you can be nestled in the hills and uh, right down the street from the beach like that. And it's just super cool. I like it. One of the perks of paying an ungodly amount of money for these homes, I suppose. <laughs> now, Robert Schiller, he is one of the inventors of the Case Schiller Home Price Index. That's where you get the Schiller part of it. And he's no stranger to making accurate real estate and economic predictions, okay? He actually called the 2000 uh, dot-com stock market bubble burst. And all the way back in 2004, he recognized there was a housing market bubble forming. In 2007, he predicted that prices were soon to crash. And sure enough, he was 100% right, and they did. And now, fast forward to 2023, Robert Schiller is coming out and saying that the housing market is exiting its period of exuberance. So this whole run-up that we saw and this 43% jump in U.S. home prices, according to the Case Schiller Home Price Index from pre-pandemic till now, is basically over, guys. This is coming to an end. But this time, he's not calling for a housing market crash. Rather, he's saying that he believes home prices are going to remain sideways for quite some time, meaning you're not going to see any meaningful movements up or down for a while. But one thing he's pretty much sure of is that the home price increases are coming to an end. And the reason why he's so sure about that is because now we're in a high interest rate environment and likely to remain in one for quite some time. His main line of thought is this crazy run up in home prices is mainly due to the fact that we had such low mortgage rates and people were frantic about being able to lock in those low rates. And if we look at this month over month change in US home prices that's measured by the Case Shiller Home Price Index, we can see that last year was the first time in a long time that the housing market started entering any meaningful uh, time of trouble. I'm a little bit more bearish on it than Robert Schiller is because I think that once fall rolls around that we're going to see home prices fall yet again just like we saw in 2022 and there will still be a recovery in 2024 just like we saw this year but I think it's going to be an even less of a recovery right like people saw home prices go back up during this spring and said well the housing market recession is over. Everything is going back to normal because home prices are going back up again. But like Robert Schiller even agrees with me on this, this is a seasonal trend, guys. This is something that we see every single year. We even witnessed this during the last housing crash. During the, the three worst years of the housing market, we still saw home prices go up in the spring and the summer and go down in the fall and the winter. So now his latest prediction, he thinks that home prices across the U.S. will fall by 10% between 2024 and 2025. Well, we're already halfway to 2024 and home prices are still down on a year over year basis right now. And I'm not saying his prediction is wrong because I at least agree with him on the fact that it's going to end uh, further down than where it's at right now. That I do agree with, but by how much, I'm not quite sure because I think 10% might be a little bit of an underestimate just when you look at the 43% increase that we've seen pre-pandemic until now. If home prices only drop by 10%, that's still not really bringing homes into the range of affordability for the everyday American, guys. And that's my main case of why I think it still is going to fall more than that. Because, you know, a 10% drop is not going to be meaningful enough to really be able to get people into buying homes again. And that's why I think you're just going to have to see it fall more because people will not be able to pay more. And we can't forget, guys, that we are still facing this recession, okay? Of course, these latest GDP numbers are coming out and making everybody think there's no way we're in a recession. But that doesn't really tell the whole picture. 
especially when a large chunk of this GDP was the housing market, guys. And literally the housing market has been carrying forward those GDP figures. So if that's all we have to stand on, and it's the only reason we have positive GDP numbers right now, what happens when that goes away? And we're already starting to see it go away in the form of much fewer real estate transactions, which slows down GDP, as well as the fact that, you know, we see mortgage applications way down. We see people that are just not buying right now simply because they can't. Here we have a four bedroom, four bathroom house and they're listed at $4.8 million. It's a fairly new listing that came out in the middle of June, but the previous owner bought this house back in 2010 and he only paid 1.5 million. Now they're asking 4.8 million for this property. And here's the thing, it looks like the Proposition 13 is not really helping the owner of this house out very much because their current property tax bill is hovering at 27,000, almost $28,000 per year, and their assessed value is at 2.4 million, which is quite a bit higher than what they paid for this house. I'm not sure why they're not getting that lucky tax break like a lot of these other houses are, but they're paying a lot more in taxes than they probably should here. And if you guys don't believe that these changes in the housing market are seasonal, first of all, I encourage you to go look at the data yourself. Find any housing graph that tracks month over month home prices and you will see that pretty much every year without fail, the home prices will go up in the spring and the summer and come down in the fall and the winter. And that's what Robert Schiller says we're seeing happening right now. That's why people are celebrating way too soon that this is a recovery in the housing market and there's gonna be no decline in home prices, guys, because the fact of the matter is home prices are currently down year over year. And now that we're entering the fall and the winter time of year, we're likely to see them continue going down even further throughout the rest of the year until spring of 2024. And if we get hit with this recession and there's a meaningful uh, uptick in amount of unemployment and there is a meaningful uptick in the amount of companies that are going out of business or cutting back and laying people off, that is going to spell disaster for this market. You know, I've gone over with you guys recently all sorts of things that will cause problems with that. You have people racking up records amounts of credit card debt. You have people borrowing against their homes in the form of home equity lines of credit and home equity loans. You have the average home buyer's uh, monthly payment is 50% of their monthly income, their monthly take home pay. So, those are all dominoes that are not that hard to push over, and I think the recession is going to be the last domino that does push it all over. But of course, some people still believe and still have hope that the Fed is going to be able to pull off this soft landing scenario, but they just raised rates again earlier in the week, another 25 basis points, guys. So, and they're committing to keeping these rates high for quite some time. So if you don't think that's gonna do any further damage to the economy, it's time to wake up. And one thing that already kind of points to this is we're seeing a big uptick in foreclosure activity right now. This is not a wave of foreclosures like we saw during the housing market crash. It's nothing like that, but it's an increase. Now, we had the moratoriums in place. People didn't have to pay their mortgages. You know, you could get into a forbearance program, but all that is over with now. And you're starting to see foreclosure filings up. Now here are the places where these foreclosures are going up the most. You have Atlantic City, New Jersey, Florence, South Carolina, New Haven, Connecticut, Baltimore, Maryland, Mobile, Alabama, Orlando, Florida, Macon, Georgia, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Peoria, Illinois, and Modesto, California. These are the areas where you can find the most uptick in foreclosures right now. So if you are somebody out there that is looking for a bargain and wants to get into a foreclosure property, those are probably your best places to start with right now. And by the way, guys, if you ever need a real estate agent, whether as a seller or as a buyer, I can set you up with one at no charge to you. It's a completely free service. I have a link in the description of all of my videos. Feel free to use that because not only will it help you get a seasoned professional real estate agent, but it also helps the channel. So it's much appreciated and it's a win-win. The fact of the matter is foreclosure filings are up 13% 
year over year in just the first half of 2023. And it will be interesting to see what that figure is in the second half of 2023 as economic conditions likely worsen. And what this means is right now, one out of every 752 homes in the United States is in some stage of foreclosure. But you know, here's another interesting aspect to this story, guys, is it's not just the foreclosure moratoriums and the forbearance programs coming to an end that's causing this uptick in foreclosures. But get this, according to Adam data, that's where all this is coming from. The average property tax on a single family home rose 3% to $3,900 in 2022. And that's up from 1.8% increase in 2021. And as property values have continued to go up throughout this year and last year, so have the property taxes that come with it and new homeowners get the biggest property tax bill of all because you guys have seen on some of my walks here some of these houses here in california they're literally paying like eighteen hundred dollars a year in property taxes on a house that's worth over a million dollars but when the new owner buys that house they're going to be paying somewhere in the neighborhood of probably you know ten thousand dollars a year in property taxes their bill is going to go up exponentially compared to what the current owner is paying and that's not just exclusive to here in california that's everywhere guys like most places when you buy a property it gets reassessed at the new value that you paid for it and your property taxes are going to be based on that new purchase price not what the old owner paid for that home and you know so many people are in this camp and you know agree with this argument that oh no one can lose a home no one can go into foreclosure because 90 percent of the homeowners out there have a mortgage rate below six percent and that's going to save the day and that's going to make it so people don't default guys but like i've explained to you before <laughs> the mortgage is the only part of your house payment that is locked in so people are losing their homes to foreclosure because of property tax increases and likely soon to be next is gonna be insurance increases because the insurance increases are getting completely out of control. In fact, I even saw a YouTube video last night talking about how on two different occasions, guys, you had a homeowner here in California and a homeowner in Florida that had their home dropped from their current insurance company because it was too old, okay? Now, the one in California, the house was built in like the mid 70s. That's too old now. And they lost their coverage from their homeowners insurance company. And of course, they're shopping around for coverage, trying to find somebody else to take them on. And surprise, surprise, everybody else is double or triple the price. And in Florida, check out this situation. This other house was built in 1984. So it's not that old, guys. That house is only a little bit older than me. And they lost their coverage due to the fact that the house is too old. The insurance company that they were with, I forget which one it was, said that they're not insuring any homes anymore that are built before the year 2014. <laughs> That's insane, okay? Because I challenge you to go out there and find a, a brand new, newer home that's newer than 2014, that's like under half a million dollars because the newer the home is, probably the more expensive it is. That seems to be the way it goes because everything that they build nowadays costs more money. So clearly, as you can see, these insurance companies are doing anything they can to eliminate as much risk as possible on their end. And they don't want to pay claims, guys. So they figure, well, we can drop people for any reason we want to. Now we can start dropping people because we can say the house is too old. That's not discriminatory. You know, it's perfectly legal for us to do that. We can get away with it. And the newer houses are going to be having less chances of something going wrong or having a claim in the event of you know some sort of catastrophe so they're just hedging their bets you know they are trying to pay out the least amount of claims as possible because that's what insurance companies do they take in the most money possible in, in premiums and pay out the least amount of money possible in claims and by the way one thing I've been wanting to share with you guys so badly and I keep forgetting to is when I was in Palm Springs, California, I took this video of a gardener with the electric leaf blower because so many people say, oh, I can't wait till all the leaf blowers are electric because they're so much quieter. They're not, guys. Check out how loud this thing is. And, you know, it's not that much quieter than a gas leaf blower. It's a little bit quieter, but it's still very noisy and very annoying. So it seems like we're going to be stuck with uh, noisy leaf blowers indefinitely, no matter what type of technology powers it. Now here's the next thing 
that I think could be a major catalyst for an actual real estate crash. You know, we talked about earlier how uh, Robert Schiller thinks that prices will come down 10% between now and 2025. Well, that's if current economic conditions remain the same, guys. Well, according to John Hussman, he is an investor. He believes that the stock market is going to see a potential 64% crash from peak to trough during this market cycle, guys. And if you wanna know what a catalyst for the entire economy and housing market coming down could be, this is it right here. If we were to see something on that magnitude, even if it was half of that, even if it was say 30, 35% drop, I think that would be enough to really tank things to the point where, you know, if you think home buying activity is slow right now, just wait. But the thing is, a lot of people have most of their wealth tied up in the stock market and that could trigger a lot of people being forced to sell or being spooked into selling because the stock market is completely tanking. And this guy, John Hussman, is making this prediction based on all the market signals that he's seeing that are exactly the same as that we saw during November 2021 when the S&P 500 lost 25% of its value in a pretty short amount of time. And 25% drop is gonna look like a cakewalk compared to a 64% drop. Now, I'm not gonna get into all this, the reasonings for his predictions and all this and that, but I wanted to bring this up because a big stock market drop like that is a huge problem for the economy. And I've read some other reports recently from other stock market experts saying that, you know, this whole stock market right now is completely detached from reality guys like these companies are being way overvalued compared to what they're earning and so many investors are just being overly optimistic with the market but it's one of those situations right where nobody ever thinks it can happen to them you know you're making a lot of money it kind of inflates your ego a little bit makes you feel more optimistic about the future and what do you do you take bigger chances, leave money in there for longer, invest maybe more than you should, and uh, bang, market comes down, you lose half your money. And John is even saying it might even go as far as having a whole lost decade situation where the stock market returns no profits for a full 10 years, guys, which would be catastrophic for anybody looking at retirement anytime soon or hoping to draw on that money. They rely on that for their income or they rely on that for their only tool of any type of wealth that they have. And the funny thing is that all these GDP numbers that are coming out recently, the 2.4% increase in GDP and people seeing that inflation is going down and ticking up at a slower rate and the employment numbers are still strong, it's giving all these people who are investing in the stock market even more reason to just be more bullish on things and just pump more money into it but when it all comes down, it's probably gonna come down hard. Now here we have a house for rent at 14.9, and it's a five bedroom, three bath house, much bigger than the previous house we saw for sale. And that disconnect from how much it costs to buy versus rent here is just unbelievable. When you can rent a house much bigger than the previous one for literally half the price that it would cost to buy something in this price range. But anyhow, the current owner of this house actually got a deal on it back during the last housing crash and bought it in 2012 for 2.1 million where the previous owner bought it in 04 for 2.35 million. So they got a good $250,000 discount there and their property tax bill here is hovering around $28,000 per year. So maybe it's kind of like the homestead thing like in Florida where if you don't live in the house, your property tax bill is much higher than if you do. That's probably what's going on here with these properties. And before you discount this guy's stock market predictions, look at his track record, okay? He predicted in March 2000 that tech stocks would plunge 83% and then the tech-heavy NASDAQ 100 index lost 83%. Literally exactly as much as he said, guys. That is like winning the lottery as far as predictions goes. In April of 2007, he predicted that the S&P 500 would lose about 40% and then it ended up losing 55% between 2007 and 2009. So actually worse than what he anticipated. That's why I listen to these type of things. Like we don't actually know exactly what's gonna happen, but I think it's important to listen to people who've been around the block and have seen previous market downturns and know how to read the signals of where things are going because is it a guarantee that it's gonna happen again this time? 
No. Does it make you think it, that there might be a strong possibility that it might? Absolutely. At least it does for me. Now, the last thing I want to cover is electric vehicles. And I like putting stories out there now and then when I read something interesting about this, because supposedly this is supposed to be a wave of the future and it's becoming an increasingly bigger size of our economy, which is why I want to talk about it. We already know that used car prices for electric vehicles have been absolutely plummeting recently. And you can get a pretty good deal on a used electric vehicle if you're willing to take the chance that you have no idea how much juice is left in the battery. But anyways, Ford has literally lost billions of dollars betting on this huge boom in the electric vehicle market and it hasn't panned out. So much to the point where Ford is going to be shifting their focus on hybrid vehicles. The reason for this is because their earnings report came out for the second quarter and it revealed a big loss in its electric vehicle unit. But on the contrary, there's been an uptick in demand for their hybrid vehicles. So now Ford is kind of changing their tune and saying, well, we're not going to give up on electric vehicles, but we're going to scale back. And this transition to electric vehicles is probably going to take longer than we thought. And the reason for this, guys, is because people don't want them, okay? Or at least they want some sort of a mix, and that's what a hybrid is. People want a stepping stone, a transitionary period into such a big change. Hybrids are exactly that, because you have a gas-powered car that has an electric motor as well that helps it assist with getting better gas mileage and extending that tank of gas. And they know that people want these hybrids because they're seeing a 10% increase in the amount of customers that are ordering their hybrid Ford F-150. On their smaller truck, the Ford Maverick, literally 56% of buyers are choosing the $1,500 add-on to get the hybrid powertrain over the standard four-cylinder engine. So there's a huge demand for hybrid vehicles right now, not so much for electric. I think it's smart for Ford to kind of lean into what's still working and what customers want, guys, because what kind of business can survive when you're producing a product that most people don't want or can't afford to buy? It's not very helpful. It's not gonna keep you in business for very long. That's what I think. And apparently there's a lot of benefits to having these hybrids besides just uh, having better gas mileage. You can have things like, you know, power outlets that can power a tailgate party or power tools, things like that, that are really helpful if you're trying to go somewhere and there's no electricity, you're on the job, that can be pretty handy. And I just can't help but wonder if this is going to be the standard for longer than most of these automakers think where you're gonna have more customers wanting some sort of hybrid option, right? Instead of just going fully all electric because it is a stepping stone. You can still stop and fill up and get gas and you don't have to worry about where am I gonna charge my car every couple of hours if you're trying to do a road trip or something like that. And let's face it guys, no matter how much you love electric cars, whether you love them or hate them, they still have a lot of kinks that need to be worked out before it can become completely mainstream. Is it fine to drive a Tesla over there and uh, just going around town here in Manhattan Beach and charging it at your house? Absolutely. They don't have extreme weather here. They don't get snow. They don't have anything here that would make that difficult. But that's not everybody's reality. If you live in a condo like me or a townhouse, you have nowhere to charge it except for the charging stations out on the road. And you have to hope that you can find one that works. And you got to sit there and waste 45 minutes of your life sitting in the car waiting for it to charge. I, for one, don't want to do that. So while I'm not against electric vehicles, what I am against is something being forced on us that we're not ready for. Literally, we're not ready because the technology is not there to make it efficient yet like gas powered cars. So I wanted to bring that up because I think Ford is being smart here after realizing, hey, we're losing billions of dollars. Maybe we should start giving customers what they want instead of trying to shove things down their throat prematurely. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like it. And if you don't want to wait for my next one to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.